Funding for the production of Folks is made possible in part by a grant from Union National Life Insurance, serving Louisiana and the South since 1926, a family-managed corporation providing whole life insurance. Straight ahead on Folks, we'll visit the placement office at Xavier University in New Orleans to find out why the best and brightest of our college graduates leave the state of Louisiana. We'll also have a preview of the upcoming Festival International de Louisiane, which celebrates the connection between French Louisiana and the other French-speaking cultures of the world, all on today's edition of Folks. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to Folks. I'm Sonia Massingale. Over a million students will graduate from college this year and most of them will be looking for jobs. Louisiana's share of that group of graduates will find that a state with an ailing economy such as ours simply will not support their career aspirations and they'll leave the state seeking their fortunes. But for minorities, leaving the South to find a better way of life is nothing new. Witness the southern origins of large populations of blacks in California, Chicago, New York, and other large urban areas. Today's lead story tells us who is recruiting our top black students away from Louisiana and why. We'll also find that at least in New Orleans, Louisiana's largest urban area, the trend of leaving the state may be slowing down as more of our young achievers find ways to begin their careers close to home. Where do the best and the brightest of our children go after college? It's a question that some say helped Governor Romer win the past election over incumbent Governor Edwin Edwards. Governor, we'll continue along with the education vein of all these questions. You as governor and I as a student know that education really is the future of this state. This state's colleges and universities are full of talented students graduating this year, who I can assure you are ready to leave, though. These students can go to almost any other southern state and make more money, get a better education for their children, and live in a definitely less polluted environment. Governor Edwards, they've lost confidence in the state government you've led for 12 of the past 16 years. If you were elected, what reasons can you give for these students to stay? One reason only. In America, they should stay if they want to stay. There's no reason for them to be forced to stay or for someone to suggest that they stay against their wishes. We have thousands of people in Louisiana from other states. Never go to an audience, but that I ask, how many of you from out of state, and generally from 10 to 20 percent in the audience? This is a mobile society. I think that a student graduating or one, any individual, just should choose the environment or the state where he thinks he can do best in life. That's what America's all about. I don't have any desire to do anything but give them that option. Now, I believe that some of the programs we have going will give them additional options. Unemployment in Louisiana has dropped consecutively for six months. It's now down to 10.3% as of today, which is 3.5% lower than it was before I became governor. And I simply suggest that we have bottomed out and are moving up, and students or people who wish to remain in Louisiana should look around and try to find some of the opportunities. I wish there were more, but it's a choice that each person should make for himself. So that means that in a, in a university system where we have students that are engineers, doctors, lawyers, the best, you feel it's okay for them to leave. We, you, in other words, you don't really think we need the best and the brightest to stay? We need the best and brightest, want them, should open our arms to embrace them and give them every possible advantage we can. But we, we have to recognize that people from MIT come down here, from California come here, from Oklahoma, from Texas, you ask in your communities. My point is that we should make it possible for them to stay here if they wish, but certainly that's a decision that should be made by every person in Louisiana. <laughs> Mr. Romer. Yes, thanks. <laughs> People are voting with their feet. There are a lot of our citizens who can't do that. They're too poor, they're too stuck, they can't go. And oftentimes those who go are the best and the brightest. And it's a tragedy that we need to stop now. We're bleeding, we need to stop it now. It starts at the top. I'll tell you why you ought to stay if you're thinking about leaving. This is a good state. 
And we've got a chance this year to make it right again. We need honest leadership at the top. We need a man who puts our pocketbook ahead of his. We need to tell America to stop laughing and start listening. This is the gubernatorial debate aired on LPB last fall. As you can see, candidate Romer's answer was obviously the one the people wanted to hear. But having the best of the crop to leave Louisiana, seeking greener pastures is nothing new or indigenous only to Louisiana. Here at Xavier University in New Orleans, a small private Catholic university with a reputation for graduating black leaders, the placement office is small but effective. Carolyn Thomas, placement officer for Xavier, says that of the students who utilize the placement center, at least 50% get job offers, mostly out of state. My job is to ensure that the students are as well prepared as possible to find satisfying career employment. I would say out of the numbers of seniors who utilize the office, at least 50% of them get their jobs as a result of an on-campus interview. And it's, it's very effective. Now, the way that we prepare students primarily through resume preparation. Each student must have an approved resume, and then we conduct videotape mock interviews. We have seminars on resume preparation, interview preparation. I work very closely with the students, one of the advantages of a small school, to ensure that they know just how to present themselves in the best possible manner, and I work very closely with them. Who's recruiting Xavier students? We've had a good year. This year we've had 110 recruiters who have come onto the campus and they look for a variety of students. Uh, I would say in the accounting areas we have big eight accounting firms and then we have Fortune 500 companies as well who look at the accounting students. In the computer science area of course we have the, the giants, we have AT&T, IBM, we also have McDonnell Douglas, CBS, Columbia House Records, uh, let's see who else, um, Dow Jones has been here for computer science, Bell Communications Research. So we have a lot of companies looking for computer science students. Computer information systems as well, that's an up and coming area. Polaroid just called me today to tell me that they had extended a job offer to one of our students. We also have people looking for sales candidates. And again, the students have a variety of companies from which to choose. We have Procter & Gamble who recruits here, Shell Oil recruits here, uh, computer sales, you have Xerox, IBM, then you have uh, the retail sales, you have, uh, let's see, Quaker Oats, Land O'Lake, so just a broad cross-section. We also have Macy's, J.C. Penney's recruiting here if a student is interested in retail. We have the major insurance companies coming here, Aetna, Equitable, Cigna, Hartford. So you can see that the students have a lot to choose from. Why do they come all the way from around the United States? to New Orleans. Uh, why do they come here? I think that they come here because Xavier has a well-deserved reputation for the quality of student that it produces. And what I'm finding is that you hear about companies saying, I'm looking for a good minority student. Where can I find them? They come here to Xavier to find those students and they're always pleased with what they find. All the companies that you mentioned are from out of state. What's the percentage of in-state recruitment to out-of-state? Ninety percent of the organizations are from out of town. So that means only ten percent are from the New Orleans area. I think a number of reasons. Obviously it has to do with the economy in New Orleans. Also, you do not have a lot of companies who are headquartered here in New Orleans. Of course, you have Freeport McMoran, but you look at other areas, say Dallas, Atlanta, and then the Northeast, and a lot of the organizations have their headquarters there. They have major facilities there. I think that also a factor is that, again, Companies are looking for talented minority students. They know about Xavier, so they're coming from everywhere. As a matter of fact, I didn't mention the education area. Now, just Thursday, we have a, a teacher fair coming up in which we expect 95 school districts from across the nation to be here looking for students. So they're coming from everywhere, from California, from New York, and they're coming right here to Xavier. Thomas maintains a close working relationship with the students who seek career guidance from the placement center. This group of students consists mainly of graduating seniors, all who have received job offers from various companies. All are Louisiana natives. 
Roy Alston Jr. is a senior in business administration. As the result of an internship, he has accepted a job offer after graduation with Rouse Company, the company that owns the Riverwalk in New Orleans. I chose to work for Rouse because it was in New Orleans, one, and it was an opportunity I could not pass up with extreme on-the-job training. My first day there, I was thrown into the rat race, and it was an experience that I, I'm learning every day and I'll never forget. And it's something I don't regret doing. In fact, I had a hard time accepting the position. At first, I turned it down, and then I, I went back and I accepted it, and that, I don't regret that. Why'd you turn it down? I had another offer uh, out of state, and I had to weigh going out of state and staying in state. And I felt that I had, would have more practical experience working for Riverwalk in New Orleans. And of course, the expenses were a lot less. Renee Stays, an accounting major, has landed a job at the New Orleans offices of Pete Marwick, mainly as the result of experience gained at summer internships out of state. Well, one of the first things Ms. Thomas asks you when you go to see her are, are you willing to relocate? She's, and she tells you right up, you know, that um, the state of the economy in New Orleans is really poor and that there are, you do have the opportunity to get a job, but not always here in New Orleans, and that there are people interested in you out of state. And, you know, she asked me to really think about it before I started interviewing. And um, I really thought about it. And I said, well, you know, it's only for a summer. And if I don't like it, I can always come back. Michelle Snowden, soon to graduate with a degree in computer information systems, is accepting an offer from Polaroid in Boston, Massachusetts. Although she's leaving Louisiana, that doesn't mean she's staying away forever. Um, throughout my interviewing process, um, I did consider um, companies here in New Orleans. But the job with Polaroid, more than anything else, the job itself interests me. And um, that helped me determine what I wanted in a job. And going to Boston, yes, it is quite far from home, but I can always come home to visit if necessary. Finally, Jeffrey Ott, a senior majoring in mass communications who is editor of Xavier School newspaper, is heading to Boston for a long internship with the Boston Globe Daily newspaper. He is happy to leave Louisiana because of the lack of career opportunities. I prefer to begin my career in the Northeast because I think that the Northeast is progressive. And I've been there before and I know people there and I've seen that not only is it more progressive, but there's a general attitude about the people there that I've, that I've met that have some type of desire and goal to, to get somewhere in life, to do something more than just being a citizen of the United States. They're, they're, they're somebody who wants to do something, who, wants to, who has goals, who has dreams, and who is acting to fulfill those dreams. And I, I haven't seen that here. I don't know what it is about the city or Louisiana. I just haven't seen it here. Let me say that this, any student that gets a job now has got to be top notch, a superstar or a water walker, if you will. Even though I deal with over 100 recruiters each year, they all want basically the same thing. It's funny when they say, Carolyn, let me tell you what I'm looking for. I'm already thinking, I know what you're looking for. You want someone who academically is strong. They want someone with experience because the degree is not enough anymore. The student must have some related experience, something pre-professional. And they also want someone who has been involved in extracurricular activities, someone who has demonstrated some uh, type of leadership capability. So you do have to be the brightest and the best. It is much more competitive now. Even though the picture is brightening somewhat, it's even more competitive. What happens to the ones who are not at the top of the class? They have to work much harder. They also have to seek employment outside of their academic area. It's unfortunate, but that's the way it is. It's not just here in Louisiana, that's everywhere. The future is looking a little brighter for some and not so bright for others. It is heartening to know at least that our students today are aware the state is losing its best in a slow trickle to states with a healthier economy. I've seen a lot of people leave the state, but then I've seen some people come back, and I think that I think that'll be the important part. 
Um, and I know a lot of people have family ties here, and that's very important to them. And I think if they come back to the state and give something to the state, that's just as powerful to, the, to Louisiana as if they had stayed here and developed their careers. I, I'm not saying that I'd prefer to go to the Northeast and stay there for the rest of my life. I'm just saying that I think that I could start a career better there. It's bad for, for Louisiana because a valuable resource is leaving the state, I mean, in droves. And they don't want to do it. I mean, a lot of students around here would really prefer to stay home, but when it comes down to the um, basic economic question, you've got to go somewhere where you can get a job. I, I hate to see it happening because New Orleans is such a great city to live in, but there comes a time in your life when you have to make that choice and you have to make that decision. Um, it's a shame that the state is losing such great, such great their future, but it comes a time when you have to make that choice, and I had to make that choice. Opportunities need to be generated. Uh, I mean, it, we've had, we're too dependent on, on, on tourism, one. Uh, two, the oil industry is going to be another 10 years before it comes back. Uh, a lot of established businesses are going out of business. And a lot of businesses are being bought up and closed down. Uh, the innovative type of technology needs to be brought in. Uh, uh, but first of all, the, the educational system, the public school system needs to be changed uh, because companies won't come here unless they have educated people. Your students are leaving Louisiana. Would they stay here if they could? Yeah, there's no question that the majority of them would stay here for a number of reasons. First of all, you know that Louisiana, particularly southern Louisiana, is a very close-knit society. The family ties are especially strong. And, and the students would prefer to stay here economically. It would be more feasible for them to get a good start if they would remain here. They would prefer to be close to family. However, I caution every student not to limit themselves to the New Orleans area. They have to be willing to relocate. That's one of the first things that I advise the students when they come in to see me is that they must be willing to relocate. Also, uh, keeping in mind their future, it's expected now that people will change careers at least three times during their professional lifetime. And if they stay here, then what are they going to change to? The opportunities here, unfortunately, are not as great as they are in other areas of the country. Our final feature for today brings to us a preview of the fabulous things to come next week in Lafayette, Louisiana. People are coming from all over the world for this one, and if you're in or around the state of Louisiana, it'll be worth your while to make the trip. The event is the second annual Festival International de Louisiane, a festival which celebrates the global connection between French Louisiana and all of the other French-speaking cultures of the world. Et Lafayette, uh, c'est le bon temps lulé.
le festival, pour nous, c'est une plateforme de donner et de recevoir. Hein, que les artistes qui sont ici ont pris contact avec d'autres artistes, ils connaissent mieux la Louisiane, le peuple louisianais. Et le peuple louisianais, euh, vice-versa. Ceci fait dissimuler un peu les plus préjugés qui existent entre les peuples. Un autre que je connais partout, quoi, presque partout, mm -hmm. mais c'est la première fois que je viens aux États-Unis. Ah, J'aime bien les gens, ils sont très gentils. Votre pays il est tellement beau, il est tellement grand, et nous ne restons peut-être pas assez longtemps encore pour voir tout ce pays qui est immense et qui est vraiment très beau. D'ailleurs, tout le groupe, nous nous sommes fait un plaisir de rencontrer les gens de Louisiane qui sont vraiment extrêmement sympathiques, et puis ce pays qui est vraiment un merveille. Il y a une cause, c'est la réussite du festival. Et ça, c'est très important. C'est-à-dire que ce n'est pas comme dans certains pays où c'est l'argent d'abord. Non. Là, j'ai trouvé que pour la Louisiane, pour Lafayette, il y avait le cœur. Et ça, c'est beaucoup. Venir ici pour ce festival francophone, c'est amener aussi euh, un peu de la culture euh, guyanaise. Mais nous avons des habitudes de similaires et je pense que c'est on constitue une grande famille. Les liens évidents qu'il y a entre la Louisiane et le Sénégal sont tout à fait faciles à démontrer. Ouvrez un annuaire téléphonique à Lafayette, vous verrez qu'il y a 45 noms sous le mot « Sénégal » et 30 noms sous le mot « Sénégal », qui est éventuellement évidemment une variante. Donc il est bien évident que beaucoup de Noirs qui sont venus euh, euh, au triste temps de l'esclavage en Louisiane avaient conservé, on leur a donné le nom du pays duquel ils provenaient. C'est très important en Afrique, surtout par rapport aux griots. Et les griots, quand ils connaissent son nom de famille, ils connaissent tout de suite son histoire. Parce que chaque nom, chaque nom est, représente une histoire. Un griot, bon, ça veut dire qu'un griot, c'est un monsieur ou bien une femme qui raconte des histoires, ils chantent, ils jouent aussi en même temps, ils transmettent le message. En mettant au village, bon, il n'y a pas de téléphone. Bon, c'est le griot qui chante dans les rues, entre les rues, quoi. Si un baptême euh, aujourd'hui ou bien demain ou bien à 5 heures, c'est le griot qui, qui transmet le message. Euh, souvent ici, il y a des fêtes en Afrique. Bon, quand il n'y a pas de griot, donc cette fête-là, ce n'est pas bon du tout. Euh, les gens bon, ils disent, bon, cette fête-là, il n'y a pas de griot, bon, ce n'est pas bon comme fête, quoi. Souvent, euh, quand il y a un mariage, quand il y a un baptême, c'est les griots qui vont là-bas. Euh, on se marie entre nous. Le griot ne se marie pas avec euh, euh, une autre fille qui n'a pas griotte. Ça ne marche pas. Le parent ne sera pas d'accord.
Festival dates are April 14th through 17th in and about downtown Lafayette. There will be lots of international food and drink at reasonable prices, and all festival events are free of charge. We'll be there and hope to see you there as well. Thanks for watching, and be sure to tune in next week for another edition of Folks. Bye-bye. Funding for the production of Folks is made possible in part by a grant from Union National Life Insurance, serving Louisiana and the South since 1926, a family-managed corporation providing whole life insurance.